Hi everyone and welcome back to another video. Again, my name is Chris and I'll be your host and thanks for tuning in. I'm just kind of going over the uh, Shadow Sphere box. Um, you know, it's probably just kind of beating a dead horse when it comes to opening these because everybody's gone over them for weeks before they came out. But I mostly wanted to go over what I'm probably going to use it all for. Maybe give you guys some ideas about it. Um, I got two of them for various reasons. I'll kind of explain why. So, I already got them all opened up. Um, haven't done anything with assembly and stuff like that. And kind of do this like in like two short videos instead of just one absolutely long video. Um, not obviously going to go through both boxes and say, hey, look, this is what I'm going to do. Just, you know, they're the exact same thing. So, um, I've kind of had a mixed feeling on a lot of the troops in here. Um, the Eliminators, I think everybody was looking forward to. Um, you know, the Suppressors are another thing that I think a lot of guys were looking forward to. I'm not a huge fan of how they look. Um, I'm trying to figure out some way to maybe change them out a little bit. I don't know. There's not a whole lot you can do with them. They're all kind of posed a certain way, but, um, they do work. Now, like I said, the biggest thing is, let me move and go to the space and stuff here. We'll do that part first. Uh, they do mix all these, so I was trying to figure out if they were going to be a, a kit later, or if it was, uh, you know, where you can actually see where things are at, but I don't think that's going to be the case on these guys. Um, I mean, they'll probably do something real similar to like they did with the other box sets when they do these, uh, because you have a mix of Marines and Phobos armor along with eliminators, along with suppressors. So you're not, they're not just going to be coming out of the box. They'll come out of the box that are just like eliminators and so on and so forth like that. Um, the first time I opened this box, I didn't, uh, let's see here we got. We got our captain, um, which he's a little expensive. Um, like I said, I kept two boxes, so I at least looked at the rules on one of them. Uh, librarian's not too expensive, and if you're going to use a lot of guys with the Phobos armor, um, is a new thing. Um, yeah, I think they're usable. The captain, on the other hand, I, I kind of think I have a use for him in my Imperial Fist Army. Um, mostly with the vanguard always that detachment called. anyways whatever the detachment is called but you know your your dreadnoughts uh can get in there and for you can pretty much make your captain a lieutenant with them with everybody in it with a siege breaker ability and uh so they get to reroll once the hit or once the wound and then you pay a command point and you can do a lot of mortal wounds so if you put a lot of a lot of shooty stuff on a dreadnought you should be doing pretty good um, I don't see the lieutenant in this box. Oh, maybe I didn't get him. Uh, might have to check on that one later. Um, so I don't think. Geez, I don't want to look in the other box. It's kind of unique. Uh, oh, he must be mixed in with the uh, thing. I guess we'll see if we can find him. <laughs> I didn't look too much in this. So bye. Um, the Eliminators, I think, are also going to probably going to be going into an Imperial Fist army. Um, they're pretty good with them because nobody gets a cover safe, which really, I think, really helps a whole lot with that. Um, the Suppressors, uh, I've been tinkering with them, just going into Blaze. I'll stop by going in them with them. Um, Imperial Fist and then running a detachment in the Blood Angels. Uh, that way they kind of get that bonus of no cover saves. So when you're firing at minus two with no cover, they, uh, they're they pretty brutal. And then uh, maybe take like another like quick jump pack squad or something like that. Uh, mostly because, you know, Crimson Fist aren't really hand to hand. And I have to tell you, so all, all the fellow Marine players, but you're probably going to have to really start mixing uh, chapters and stuff like that to really get them to be competitive, especially nowadays. Um, the only thing, I think a lot of people are thinking the same thing, is the troop choices in here with Phobos armor. These Marines are kind of expensive um, for what you get. I think there could be a use for them, and I think something's coming. That's why they came out with them this way. Um, but the uh, inflammatory squad, as they're called, just, I'll just drop that in there real quick, and everybody's been going over the rules. But the biggest thing is nobody can. Reinforced within 12 inches of them, which is nice. You can give them kind of an apothecary. Uh, I just call him a medic. Um, he likes adept or medic. Um, I don't know if that's really that big of a thing. And then um, you can combat squad. But they can also, um, 
When you set up your this unit during the deployment, it can be set up anywhere on the battlefield that is more than nine inches away from an enemy deployment zone in any amino ounce. Um, I don't know if Gene Steeler call it. They're doing pretty well right now. If that's going to be a huge stopper where you can literally put them right up there and force them to reveal pretty much their entire army right off the bat. Um, because I know that's uh, one of the things I play Gene Steeler call because I think I did a little video on it. Um, I think that's one of the huge advantages they have is to be kind of hide their army. Those kind of off, off those. Now, the downfall is they, their weapons are only assault to. Strength four, no modifier. Uh, the only huge advantage is if you roll a six, they auto wound. Um, again, that's kind of where I'm like looking at more of them being Imperial Fist fanboys than anything else. Um, I mean, the Ultramarines, you kind of get that runaway thing. There's no real use for them in Dark Angels. I don't think there's any use for Blood Angels with them. I mean, they do have two attacks, but I just don't really see them doing either one. They don't have any plasma or anything like that. They kind of kind of use any stratagems with those. Um, they just, they kind of fall in that, you know, they are vanilla and they're kind of a support troop. Now, with Crimson Fist or Imperial Fist, you can still use the um, Bolter Drill roll with them. So that might be a reason to take a 10-man squad. Because if you take a 10-man squad, you roll a 6, um, not only do you get an auto hit, you get another shot. And uh, that could be important. I mean, if you, if you have a 10-man squad and, you're, and you drop them right or they're up front... And they can lay down, you know, 20 shots in one turn. And those 20 shots turn into, you know, several autos and then a couple extra shots and things like that. And you get no cover saves, let's say, with uh, Imperial Fist. It, 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 you know, it puts Eldar down pretty easily unless, you know, depending on what they are. But the, and that might be a really good way to, like, burn out a Dark Reaper squad. You know, just put all the fire right on them right off the bat and knock them down and you know like i said if they're imperial fist they don't get cover saves so if you got them up there in cover they're going straight to their armor save um which is still pretty good i'm pretty sure it's a four up uh that's kind of like an issue a lot of eldar uh yanari players have is their saves aren't all that great but they're still not terrible i mean they they hit like a, a tank and really you look nowadays in the meta of the games and everybody is really um i mean he's really yanari strong or Craft World Strong or Drakari Strong. It just feels like you're just reading the same list over and over again. Um, and part of it, I think, is people just don't know how to play against them. So you start running that issue where, you know, if you play Marines because you like Marines, you kind of just run into this issue where you don't know any other rules because pretty much every Marine army just has little differences. Um, but I think that's where you have to start looking kind of like, you know, my Gene Stealer Cole army is going to run either an Imperial Guard attachment or it's going to run a... High fleet attachment um, to kind of buff up where it's got its weaknesses at. Um, it seems like all when I play like flat ultramarines or flat crimson fist or flat blood angels, they're always in. There's always something missing. Like blood angels, they you know they're they're real good at putting people on the back of their heels, but if you can't keep the pressure on, they just kind of piddle down down the road. And I'm kind of curious, and I think that's where these suppressors are going to go. Um, mostly because they can keep up with the jump troops. They don't really need to keep up. Their range is exceptionally well. Um, but if you can get two really good hammer assault squads, you may not be burning, because I burn a lot of command points usually to guarantee a first turn assault with a death company and the cemetery guards um, and get them right in there into people's grills and put pressure on them. Um, it has backfired on me. It backfired on me uh, on Saturday in a game where it just, they didn't do a whole lot and they just soaked up everything else right to the face and then everything else kind of had to deal with the rest of the army. Um, like I said, I'm, I'm about 90% sure once I get them all assembled that all the suppressors are gonna go to Imperial Fist and I'll just run Imperial Fist attachments into every army after that because they are just so much better if somebody doesn't get a cover save. Now you can say, well, one of the profiles, you don't get cover saves anyways. Yeah, but I'm thinking more of you know, putting them out there so they got a line of sight on a character and blasting them with their, their max capability. Okay, there's the lieutenant. I was trying to figure out where it was at. I thought maybe he had his own separate thing. Um, I was actually saying that I might actually be using my lieutenant as, I might use him as a sergeant for a five-man squad for the regular Marines and then use the medic and 
add some bigger shoulder pads, change his arms out, and use this thing so he could uh, be a primary subpathic carry. Um, because I think that's better than just him being in a squad. I just, I don't see him being, as many points as he is, I just don't see him being effective. The, the squad itself is expensive. So that becomes an issue. Um, the librarian's just, you know, he's a librarian, but he gets a deep strike and he can, or not deep strike, he gets to um, set up on the board, um, infiltrate, as you'd like to say, with his Phobos armor and, uh, you can actually support these guys. So that's kind of where I started thinking maybe more Imperial Fist than Crimson Fist or Ultramarines even. Um, an Ultramarine army is literally just designed to sit back and let you come. And if you don't come, they just move slowly top forward to do stuff. And that's kind of where I was like, yeah, you know, Imperial Fist, I could take, you know, maybe three squads, you know, two five man squads, one 10 man squad, um, and then take the Librarian and maybe the lieutenant just to keep things cheap. Eh, or maybe I just take this captain here. Um, you know, he's not terrible. Um, his bolt gun's okay. It's just another easy way to kind of pick off lower powered lords and stuff like that. Um, you know, and like I said, everybody's been really going over the books lately. So, I mean, you Google this, there's a ton of information. But I do, you know, it's really funny. You flip through the page, and there's one page that caught my attention. Yeah. So, play with it. So they actually have Reavers in here um, because they gave them the Phobos armor. And to me, that's not a huge thing. Um, you know, my Reavers are kind of just like a cheap drop and either assault or cheap drop and shoot, just something to stall a line. They're not terribly expensive. So they definitely gain some advantages. I do use them with the Crimson Fist and um, the goal was to, if I do drop, to look at a big squad, like a big Hormigan squad, like something that's going to be a, something that's going to mud up the rest of my troops if I have to get up there and assault and just have them just go right down on them. Um, there's not a whole lot, I think, that happens with um, that, uh, you know, I think that one of the only huge advantage with them is if you have a good squad and you use the Librarian, and you shroud with man if I select an enemy Adeptus Astartes Probus within 18, 18 inches of the Psyker unit until the end of the, your next Psychic Phase. Enemy models can only shoot this unit if it's the closest target that is visible. So it really, you can literally put that out on the Eliminators because you just dropped, of course you probably put that always on your Eliminators, um, but you would drop those uh, those Reavers right up front. So every guy kind of has a synergy of Phobus armor. Um, I, uh, I just don't know if Phobos will be a big thing or if they're going to change something. Um, you know, it's it's funny that they would actually make specific rules for Phobos armor um, versus just the regular uh, Primaris stuff. I mean, it's like they, they want to make an army within an army, um, which makes you kind of wonder if you, we are going to see a Primaris Codex only where they don't use any Space Marines and all of a sudden you'll have, you know you know, special weapon selections or heavy weapon selections um, in your squads um, or even make it so every every sergeant, every squad, not just the uh, interceptors, be able to have power weapons, chain swords, and power fists, and all of them will have that option. Um, and then they start giving the plasma pistol to all of them, just like they do with the Hellblaster. So I don't know. Um, like I said, really everything's kind of going really primaris. Um, there's still some issues. I think you don't have really a good assault, but it's all about shooting nowadays, um, so that's kind of the way it goes. So, but yeah, we're gonna do another little video, or I'm gonna do another little video real quick, also about the chaos stuff. That's actually where I'm more excited about, because um, I've been working on building a Black Legion, and of course the new Abaddon models coming out, and obviously I already got one of those on order the second it came available. So, but all right, everybody, you guys have a great day, and good luck gaming.